Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Jasmine Zane. Uh, I am uh, the director of T cell lymphoma at City of Hope in Duarte, California. And I also see a lot of patients with T cell lymphoma. And it is my pleasure today to give you an update on the current vaccines uh, as of October, 2023, as recommended by CDC. These are the vaccines that are, are being recommended for the upper respiratory tract infections that we are expected to experience in the next few months. So here are my slides. So CDC, as you know, the Centers for Disease Control, um, you know, give us frequent gives us frequent updates uh, about what's required to prevent infections and urine uh, and upper respiratory tract infections. As you all know, tend to um, tend to occur a lot more, uh, tend to peak in the in the winter and and fall months. And so uh, the CDC has been anticipating this. And as you all know, every year we get updates about flu vaccines. This year we have a triple threat. We have the ongoing threat of COVID-19 infection, which as you all know, continues to mutate. And we have new viral, um, you know, viral names that come through. Uh, all the time. So, you know, the, the virus itself is changing, which is why we need to change our vaccines as well and update our immunity. So I hope that everybody already got their original set of vaccines, whether it was Moderna or Pfizer, and then the boosters that came on earlier this year. So now we have a, you know, another booster that has been um, approved by the FDA and the CDC is recommending that. So I'll be talking about that. The other uh, big um, respiratory issue is the flu. Uh, so as, as usual, the flu continues to be prevalent in the winter months. And so we have a new flu vaccine. And also for the first time, um, there is an RSV, which is the respiratory syncytial virus um, vaccine available as well. This, this is not a major problem for most of us, but in younger children uh, and in older and also in immunocompromised adults, uh, RSV infection can lead to pneumonia and can be life-threatening. So we now have immunizations against all these three, and I will be discussing these in the next uh, couple of slides. So here is the recommended schedule for vaccines, all three vaccines uh, as of October, 2023. It is recommended that all everybody over the age of six months get these vaccines if they can. So there is the flu vaccine. Now the flu vaccine has many uh, formulations. Most of them are inactivated viruses. These are given by injection form uh, and your local uh, pharmacies or your health centers may be giving out these vaccines. Um, it's a single shot. There's also a nasal spray, but that is usually a live attenuated vaccine. And that is not recommended for patients who are immunocompromised or maybe around pa patients who are immunocompromised. For example, if you're you know, if it's somebody in your family it has um, has a has a lymphoma or a cancer and is getting chemotherapy, perhaps uh, those uh, you know in in that family children should not get the nasal vaccine. They should get the injectable form. The nasal vaccine is usually given to younger children, um, but that's a live virus. Everybody else should get an inactivated virus. Now the COVID booster, the new booster, I've already gotten it, um, is recommended as a single shot for every anybody over the age of six months. Again, most of us should get that. They qualify within that with some exceptions. If you've had COVID-19 infection within the last three months, uh, or if you've been vaccinated in the last three months, it's recommended that you wait that amount of time before you get the booster. Um, if you're immunocompromised, they are suggesting it's not a, that, that after discussing with your doctor, you get a second uh, booster as well, because if you're immunocompromised, your system does not respond as well to the vaccine. So maybe you should get another, uh, you know, two shots instead of one. Um, and again, you have the Pfizer and Moderna. And my understanding is that there's another one that may be approved soon uh, or may, or, may already been approved. Um, the, it does not matter whether you get got Moderna or Pfizer in the past, either one is fine, whichever one your pharmacy is, is uh, or your health center is administering. And then there's the RSV vaccine, which is recommended for um, children uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, and also pregnant women between the weeks of 32 and 36 and older adults over the age of 60. Uh, and again, it's a, sil a single shot. It's live. It's not a live virus. It's an inactivated virus. So it is safe to take in, in the immunocompromised uh, uh, population. Um, so I'm going backward. This is Again, I'm a little bit more what I've already said, flu shots, uh, there are many different types. Uh, make sure it's a live attenuated if you are um, 
immunocompromised. And this summarizes all the things that I've already said. Um, for patients who are older the, or over the age of 65, as this has always been the case, they should get the high dose or the adjuvenated flu vaccine because, again, because the immune system is weaker, so we want a, an adequate response. And the advantage of the flu vaccine is it's not going to pause the flu. You may feel tired and fatigued and even have a fever after the vaccine, but that's just a response to the vaccine. It's not the actual flu. But if you do end up getting the flu or getting exposed to it, your illness will be mild and the chances of hospitalization, even death are, are reduced significantly because in an immunocompromised state, the flu, va flu illness can be quite um, devastating and can lead to, you know, again, hospitalization, death, organ failure, et cetera. Um, okay. And this is, I guess, a map showing the incidence of flu across the United States at the moment. Um, you know, the, there are many places, many states that are going to be hit uh, by um, the flu this year. This is from last year. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, as you can see that I've, almost all the states were hit uh, with the flu. And COVID-19, this is, um, again, a summary of the whole thing. You have the BioNTech, uh, Pfizer or Moderna. Children over the age of six months or older are eligible. Um, so you, you know, if you're one thing to remember that kids who are six months of age right now, they have not had the original set of vaccines, you know, they, they were uh, started in 2020 and 2021. So they will probably need to get the whole set, uh, the, the double, the double shot initially, and then the booster after that. So they will require multiple doses to kind of catch up to the rest of the population. Um, and then again, the whole idea is to prevent serious illness um, and also reduce the transmission within the community. And as of there is, you know, COVID-19 is ongoing. It hasn't gone away. You've seen this is the map as of October 10, 2023, coming from the New York Times. Um, and you can see that there was sort of there is starting to be an uptick here again in the incidence of uh, COVID-19 hospitalization. So it is important for all of us to get get our shots. And this is RSV, it's a recombinant vaccine. Um, it's recommended for patients over the age of 60, babies, and then pregnant women between 32 to 36, again, uh, 36 weeks, because they will then develop an immunity that then they will pass on to their babies uh, once they're born. Um, RSV infection can be devastating in little children. They get, you know, their rest, their their throats are small, and if they get this this infection, they can get pretty sick and hospitalized from it. So it's important to prevent this infection in little little babies. Again, and even in immunocompromised adults, it can lead to a serious illness and hospitalization. And I think that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Thank you very much.